Yeah, hi, and welcome back to Metal Max Mopar engine assembly tips and engine assembly theories and what have you. Anyways, uh, I've been uh, pushing the idea, for especially for the novice engine builders, about measuring everything because you can't trust quality control anymore from any of the manufacturers, and that, I'm, I mean any of them. Quality control has uh, basically been tossed out the window through the floor or whatever you know analogy you want to give it. And uh, right here today, we're going to prove it. These are a set of brand new Edelbrock E Street heads for a big block Chrysler. They're going on a 440 street engine uh, with a uh, retrofit hydraulic roller cam and a six pack high you know high compression piston and stuff. So. Uh, this engine will make a few, you know, a few, few ponies when it's done. But uh, I always tear into these. I've been tearing into uh, all the Edelbrock or all the aftermarket heads for years and years now because you can't trust the quality of the machining and the components. And this just goes to prove my point. Unfortunately, here with this uh, particular engine, uh, the guides aren't machined right. On this uh, particular head, and I number my heads when I start building an engine, so I call it head number one, cylinders one through seven. The valve stems all measure up at 3.341 inch in diameter, but the guides range from 3.430 to 3 and 3.420, which is not enough clearance for the exhaust valves in particular. So what would happen if you just take these out of the box and put them on an engine? There's a damn good chance that the uh, as the exhaust valve heated up and expanded, it would jam in the guide, hang open, and contact the piston, or a piston contact the valve, and you'd have a catastrophic loss. One other thing that was a little interesting about this particular uh, this particular head here is that I had uh, like a little bit of a gouging on uh, all of the intake valves. And there's witness marks on some of the exhaust valves, and I have no clue as to what the hell caused it or why. And I'll show you, see if I can get it to focus in on it here. And we'll use this one with the, uh, the locks and the retainers to sort of show you. Uh, hopefully the camera will pick it up. You see the gouge there? All of them have it. It's about five-eighths of an inch below the top of the valve. And it's about three thirty seconds of an inch below the uh, retainer and it's nowhere near the uh, the locks or the keepers. And like I say, every one of the intakes have it. You can probably see it here on this one also. I'm a little perplexed as what the hell would cause that during assembly. I've never seen this before. And like I say, in the exhaust, they, they have the mark they say there's no there's no actually gouge in them, but they have a witness mark. Well, because the alloys for the exhaust valves are completely different, and they're much tougher material. That's why they didn't. That's why they didn't gouge. Anyways, the uh, these heads now after inspection, they're going to have to go to the machine shop and uh, be reamed to the proper size for exhaust valve to guide clearance. And one thing I want to point out. Uh, to those, I want a minimum of three thou clearance on the exhaust valve to uh, exhaust valve stem to the exhaust valve guide. Minimum three thou clearance, because if you don't get that, like you say, too much chance for uh, the valve sticking in the guide. And this, these valves here were fine, not a mark on them. The only thing they did, they measured up a little. They're a little bit out. Uh, these, the other ones were all. 3.341 diameter. These ones range from 3.407 to 3.41, which is not that big a deal. Again, one other thing I want to point out on these guys here is that uh, you may see something on the head that looks like little little specks of pepper, but it's not pepper, obviously. And it's not dirt. And I don't know if this camera will pick it up. I 
and see if I can get in close enough and see if it'll focus. What it is is micro porosities in the castings. And they show up as little tiny black, look like little black flakes. Teeny tiny pieces of dirt is what it looks like. But actually what it is, it's, 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 it's porosity. It's poor casting quality. And this is what you're finding with a lot of these aluminum castings now, is micro, these micro porosities. Now what this will do over time is going to be interesting to see. But again, it just shows you where the hell quality control is gone as it relates to automotive engines in the aftermarket. I think you can see it too here on uh, this particular head if I can get it in close enough. And Uh, it's maybe not showing up. But that's what it is. It looks like teeny tiny little fleck, flakes of pepper. Black pepper or teeny tiny little pieces of dirt, but that, it's not dirt. Porosities. And there's no way to get rid of them. I mean, you just if you resurface the head, just they'll just more of them will just pop up because it's right into it's cast right into the material. So, anyways, the point is, double check everything, measure everything. You cannot assume anything on these engines anymore, or any of these parts and pieces. So end up buying yourself a decent little micrometer, something that'll measure into the uh, ten thou range. This is a you know old manual star it, good, and then star it whole small hole gauge, or have your machine shop do it. Because without it, you're just guessing, and don't buy any of this nonsense about just take them out of the box and bolt them on because that that's just a crapshoot. Uh, and you'll find out the hard way. You know, say if the valve hangs up. And they've been known to hang up. So, anyways, we'll leave it at that. We'll continue on with the videos next time. Thanks for watching. Bye now.